This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar called Ask Larry Anything. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short video tutorial, I'll illustrate real-world speeds for SSDs and RAIDs, along with details on how much storage speed we actually need for editing videos smoothly. The answers will surprise you. When it comes to storage for true speed and capacity, we need to combine multiple drives into a RAID. Yes, we can absolutely edit off a single hard drive. Yes, we can absolutely edit off a single SSD, but the problem is hard drive won't have the speed you need and the SSD won't have the capacity you need. So we need to combine them into a RAID. When we do, there are multiple RAID types that we can work with. When we connect a device via Thunderbolt, the fastest we can transfer data is about 2,850 megabytes a second, which sounds fast, and <laughs> it is. But for some things, we're going to need all of that speed. What I've been doing over the last two weeks is testing NVMe SSD RAID made by OWC called Thunderblade. It has four blades inside it, four SSDs, and when they're combined into a RAID 0, they read and write data around 17 to 1800 megabytes a second, which is not anywhere near the speed that Thunderbolt provides. RAID 0 gives us the fastest possible speeds for both reading and writing. But if one of the blades or one of the drives inside a RAID 0 dies, you lose all of your data. Now, the sound of losing all of your data is not a happy sound. <laughs> not at all. But there's a couple of options. One, we can format the RAID so that there's a parity disk. A, a portion of the RAID is reserved for preserving our data. At the exchange is that we have everything slow down. Or we can buy an inexpensive spinning hard drive and back up our files every night. In point of fact, it's cheaper to buy a second hard drive and do a backup than it is to suffer the slowdown of formatting a RAID as a RAID 4, 5, or 10. Let me illustrate. If I format it as a RAID 4, which is optimized for SSDs, my speeds go from 17 to 1800 to 11 to 1500. So there's a speed hit, especially in writing. If I format as RAID 5, which is optimized for hard drives rather than SSDs, it goes a bit slower. And if I format it as a RAID 10, it goes slower still. RAID 10 gives us the easiest access in case our, one of our drives dies, but it's also the slowest of all the formatting options. So my recommendation when we're formatting a drive is use RAID 0. That allows us to use all the blades inside the SSD RAID, but make a point to have a backup of that every day so that in the case that one of those blades dies, which is not likely, but if it does, your data is protected on a much less expensive and much slower hard drive. The other thing I wanted to look at is what's the difference in speed as we add more drives to an SSD RAID? So I set the speed of a PCIe SSD. Those are the ones that came out about 10 years ago that we can now buy for about $100 to $200 for several terabytes. I set that to 100%. An NVMe SSD is almost double that for both reading and writing. If I take those NVMe SSDs and combine it into a two-drive RAID 0, it goes up three times faster than the PCIe SSD. A three-drive RAID 0 is four times faster. A four-drive uh, SSD RAID 0 is five, almost six times faster than a PCIe SSD. Clearly, the more SSDs we add to a RAID, the faster it goes. But the question is really not what's the fastest possible RAID, but how fast do I need my storage to go to edit effectively? When I asked the question that way, I got a whole different set of answers. If I take a look at a PCIe SSD, which is formatted using APFS, and I uh, measure it uh, with Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, the blue bar indicates those formats and frame rates which are HD, both 720 and 1080. The yellow bar indicates those formats which are 4K. And the red bar indicates those formats which are 8K. 
if I have a device which goes at 400 megabytes a second, every standard def, every high def, and every 4K frame rate and codec can be edited off a single PCIe SSD. It doesn't require a RAID. It's only when we get up to 8K that 400 megabytes a second is not enough. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not editing 8K regularly, which means that we don't need to obsess about getting the fastest possible storage if all we're doing is single camera editing. Now, multicam is different. Multicam, you're going to need the speed that a, a, a RAID, an SSD RAID provides, especially if you're doing 4K multicam editing. For multicam editing and for really large frame sizes, an SSD RAID will make a lot of sense. But if you're asking yourself what's fast enough for single camera editing, 400 megabytes of PCIe SSD gives you everything you need. Martin asks, will the need for more speed ever end? Once speeds get to instant and video acquisition levels off at you know 4K or 12K or 36K or wherever that ends, do you see a time where more speed will not be an issue? Well, actually, speed really isn't an issue today. SSDs are more than fast enough to edit what we need. The bigger issue is speed with capacity. We can get plenty of capacity with hard drives, but they're not fast enough, when, even when we combine them into a RAID. I can get plenty of speed with an SSD, but it doesn't have the capacity. The real challenge and what we're looking for going forward is SSDs that hold more than one or two or four terabytes. And right now, those really deep, high-capacity SSDs cost a fortune. So my hope is to see SSD speeds stay the same. They don't need to improve, but the capacity needs to become a lot more. When you format an SSD using XFAT, which we format because we're using it on Windows and Mac, or because it's just the default that we've picked, XFAT slows down appreciably in Mac OS Ventura, something like 30 to 50 percent. It's a bug in Ventura, which Apple has not fixed. So if you're formatting an external SSD, use APFS. If it needs to move between Windows and Mac, you can use XFAT. There's going to be a speed slowdown. But there's also utilities which allow Windows systems to read APS formatted volumes on Windows. So just as a heads up, XFAT is nice. It's compatible between platforms. But once you upgrade to Ventura, it's going to slow down a lot. This was an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar called Ask Larry Anything. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 343. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.